Hi, I'm Casper and I'm getting paid to run this YouTube channel. Being paid means doing stuff the way people tell you to. However, I wasn't really told what I'm supposed to be doing by my boss, so that's a little bit of a problem. I wanted to attach a gun on top of our rover since I've started working here, but it wasn't allowed. Now, for a YouTube video, they say it's alright, so that's the idea for that one at least. Problem is, I'm not an American, so attaching a real one is going to be a little bit of a problem. I have to go the more boring but less illegal way in Poland by attaching either an airsoft gun, paintball marker or Nerf blaster. I'd love to be using a paintball marker, however we've got white walls basically everywhere, so that's a no-go at least for now. I'll have to settle for a Nerf blaster. And the reason for choosing it is basically only the size of the projectiles it's shooting. They are big, so should be pretty easily seen on camera. At least that's what I'm hoping for. The idea basically is to steal one of the rovers, which is already done, and then just ask my boss to put a gun as a business expense, which should be pretty easy because, well, it's already done. So I'll get this. Yeah, what is left right now is to somehow strap it onto the rover and it should be pretty easy because what I want it to be able to do is only pan and tilt. However, yeah, future me is going to give a million reasons why it's not going to be easy. From current me point of view, all I can say is that it's huge, like incredibly big, basically the same size as the rover and also pretty heavy. It's also heavy hitting, which basically means that if the ball hits your naked skin, it's going to stink, which is nice because it lowers the morale of anyone I'm working with but boosts mine, so it's the important part of this project. I will get a few measurements, design and print a few parts and we'll see each other when it's done. I am perfectly aware that you cannot see my face right now, but it's not important. What is important is this. It's moving smoothly, does not get stuck on anything. And also it does not put any strain on the motors because it's connected roughly in the center of mass of the gun, which basically means that if I tell it to move into any kind of position, it's going to just stay like that. That's nice. However, as of right now, I am the only one that's capable of moving it. And I really should write some kind of a software that's going to tell the rover how to move it for me. Also, the bigger problem is that uh, the rover has got absolutely no idea how to push on physical buttons. So I can just press those two and have it shoot on anything I want, but the rover does not know how to do it. Problem is, I also don't know how to teach the rover to do it. I am really bad at software and at electronics, so it's going to take ages before I finish it. However, the sooner I start, the sooner I finish, I guess. I'm going to start with shooting because it seems more fun. To shoot the blaster, all I need to do is press these two buttons. The one on the bottom makes these motors spin, the one above it forces the balls from the magazine right into the motors, this makes them fly. I really did not want to teach the rover how to push on physical buttons, so that's why I've decided to create a parallel connection using MOSFETs right next to the buttons. The idea was simple. I wanted to attach the MOSFETs parallel to the buttons and call it a day, but it didn't work. I've destroyed four MOSFETs trying to fix it and learn why it's not working. Then I've learned that I cannot be using N-type MOSFETs in front of the load and that I should be using B-type MOSFETs. This way, thanks to my limited knowledge about electronics, I've wasted another two days and had to wait for the parts to be shipped. When the good MOSFETs arrived, I've connected them in place of the old ones, did something wrong, killed an Arduino board, desoldered the broken MOSFETs and soldered new ones in place, this time thinking about what I'm doing. With all that done and a nice Rasta wire created, I can finally control the blaster using an Arduino. I will show you how it all works, however I need to remove the magazine first. I will also need to press this one button for safety, whoever needs it. I have removed the magazine and put a little bit of sticky tape here where the safety mechanism is, so that I can show you that it all works now. All I need to do to control this motor is get the yellow wire and connect it to the ground on Arduino. It works the exact same way for the other motor. I am a mechanical engineer, which basically means that I refuse to admit that wires have any kind of volume. This means that the wiring here in this project looks really terrible and needs to be fixed in the future. However, 
future is the keyword and it's a problem for a future me, not current me. So let's not talk about it. Let's talk about the software part of this project. I wanted it to be as easy as humanly possible because I don't really like working with it and I don't feel that my programming skills are any good. It can be divided in four parts. The first one is moving the rover, second moving the turret, next one is shooting the turret and the last one is just a uh, human interface. When it comes to moving the rover basically no work had to be done. It comes with side steering by default and the mechanium drive mode was built by me a few months prior. Moving the turret was a little bit more tricky. I had to learn how to use dynamic cells in a ROS environment. However, it was pretty easy thanks to the dynamic cell SDK that the creators of the dynamic cells provide on their side. All I had to do was create some bounds for the dynamic cells so they are not going to crash one part of the turret into the other one. Shooting the blaster means that I had to find a way of connecting the Arduino to the ROS running on the built-in Raspberry Pi. This is pretty easily done thanks to the ROS serial library. Now, every time the Arduino sees any message sent to one of the topics I've chosen, it's going to start the motors of the blaster. This shoots the gun and works well enough for my case. The biggest problem I had with this project was writing the code for the joy control. Not because it was hard to connect it, but because there's a lot of things going on at the same time. The rover I'm using has mechanical wheels. This basically means that I need two analog sticks to control it fully. As of right now, I've decided that I'm going to be using one analog stick for controlling the turret and the second one for controlling the rover. However, I had only one analog stick left when the other one was used for the turret. So this forced me to find a way of switching between the mechanical drive mode and the skid steering mode. In the skid steering mode, the robot moves front and back and rotates when I'm using the analog stick. In mechanical drive mode, it's going to just move left and right and is incapable of rotation. However, it can still go front and back. Moving the turret is much easier. Just move the analog stick to whatever position you want and the turret is going to move accordingly. I could talk a lot about the key bindings here, but there's no real point. What's more interesting is whether the whole project works or not. And I'll be honest with you, it works, but just barely. As of right now, it constantly gets stuck on the wires, which is a real problem because it's pretty dangerous for the project itself. However, the bigger problem is that I've got absolutely no idea what it's pointing at. I'd want it to be pointing at the camera right now, but I just feel as if it's going to be pointing a little bit to the right of it or to the left when you're watching it. So the only target that I can reliably shoot is myself because I can see that the barrel is pointing exactly at me. So that's obviously a little bit of a problem as I wanted to be hitting my coworkers with it. I wasn't expecting a small rover with an oversized red blaster to be this scary. When a person is holding it, you can see that they've got, uh, I don't know, feelings, maybe, and this rover has none. This basically means that when a person is pointing it at you, you know that he's going to stop when he feels you paralyzed with pain lying with the ground. When it comes to this rover, mm -mm, there's nothing. For the next video, I'm going to attach a camera on top of this rover. So I will finally be able to see whatever the gun sees and shoot a few things or a few of my coworkers. I would also like to learn a little bit more about computer vision. What I want to do is teach the rover how a human looks like and teach the turret to aim at them at will. As of right now, that's basically it for the video. Uh, I'm sorry that there wasn't much shooting. I'll try to make it better for the next one. Facts are important. Ah.